Hi guys and welcome to How's It Rate. My name's Chico and I'll be your host today. Got something special for you today. We are going to do pork loin parmigiana and we're going to learn how to save some money doing it too. So let's get going with it. The first thing we'll do is start with a piece of pork loin. This one here is about a quarter of the whole loin and if you buy it this way as compared to a cut already, you save about a dollar fifty a pound. So whenever possible, buy the whole piece. It's very easy to cut. All you need is a sharp knife, and I'm cutting my pieces about one inch thick here. And you'll see that I'll probably get about uh, seven pieces or so out of this. And uh, as I mentioned, it's much, 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 much cheaper to buy it whole rather than already sliced. So we'll just go through this and get it all sliced up and then I'll portion it out and probably put some of it in the freezer. Now as I get closer to the end the chops won't be as big but we can still use that meat for another dish such as maybe uh, skewer it up and cook it on the grill. Um, tons of things you can do with it. As you can see, we've got a nice slice here, very nice and lean. Uh, it definitely is the other white meat and perfect for our application here today. I've selected one of our slices to work with here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of uh, cling free or cellophane wrap, whatever you uh, call it. And we'll stretch it out over our surface. And then we're going to put our chop down and we'll cover it with another piece of the uh, cellophane. And we're going to begin pounding, it out, pounding the meat out. Now without that cellophane we would have meat everywhere, trust me. Uh, the cellophane will also act as uh, a lubricant so that the meat will stretch out nicely. Now you don't want to pound this into oblivion to paper thin this. We don't want to do that. We just want to pound it until it's even all the way around and probably around a quarter inch thick. Now that I've pounded it and got it nice and even all the way around, I'll remove the cellophane. You see it comes off nice and easily. And I'm just going to put the, uh, ch the, the flattened chop onto a plate. Very little fat. It's a very nice cut of meat. I like to season my meat first before I do any of the breading. Uh, I think it, um, that the flavor adheres a little better and it's not uh, uh, dependent on what's in the uh, flour or the uh, breading. So I season both sides of it. Here I'm using a little bit of uh, paprika, uh, salt, a little pepper, and a pinch of cayenne. That's a perfect flavor that I'm looking for in this dish. Now we're going to save a little more money. I'm not a dredger. Uh, even when I had the restaurant, if we were doing small portions, I would always sprinkle the flour on. That way we were not wasting a whole bunch of flour and throwing it out. So this is a nice little secret that will save you a ton of money over the course of time, of course. And as you can see, uh, I'm going to be doing both sides, again, sprinkling the flour on generously. It's still a lot less flour than you'd use if you were doing it the old dredging way. And I'm just going to push that in with my fingers, make sure it's good and uh, adhered. And if you let it set for a few minutes, it will stick a little better. This is a traditional step in uh, when you're doing anything that's breaded and you're going to fry it. Uh, always put the flour on first so that the egg has something to adhere to, not vice versa. Make sure nobody comes over there and thinks it's a big piece of fried dough with powdered sugar on it. Keep an eye on it. Never know, it might disappear. Now it's time to put our egg wash on. And we want to make sure that uh, we, we shake off the excess flour. And I never use my hands for this. I always use a pair of tongs. Uh, I'm not the dry hand, wet hand type of guy. And I just put it in there and get a nice coating of egg on it. And we're going to save a few more cents. We're going to put our bread crumb, crumbs on a plate and just put our, our cutlet right on top of the bread crumbs. No sense contaminating a whole bunch of bread crumbs when you don't have to. 
and I sprinkle a little bit more. By the way, these are uh, homemade breadcrumbs. Uh, they're probably very close to a panko. Uh, I ground them up and then sifted them so they're nice and fine with sharp edges. And you'll notice that I'm going to pat these into the meat. So you want to apply a little pressure, make sure that you've got good contact and adhesion. And you notice I didn't use a whole bunch of, of breadcrumbs. And I'm going to take what's left on the plate, plate there and sprinkle them onto those portions that aren't quite well coated. Very simple. We don't waste anything. Yeah, give them another pat. And then we're going to let this rest for a little bit. A little rest time doesn't hurt. It just uh, helps those breadcrumbs adhere. And, and they won't fall off quite as easily when uh, you put them in your, your hot oil. And that's all there is to the breading. Very simple. Starting to look better and better. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to a small fry pan. I'm using one small fry pan because this is going to be a one serving meal for yours truly. Put a few breadcrumbs in there just to make sure that the oil is up to temp. And I'm going to lower my cutlet, my breaded cutlet, into the hot oil. As you can see, the oil was at a perfect temperature. It's frying up nicely. And the important thing to remember here is not to over fry it because we still have to put it in the oven. So if you cook it all the way through here, it's going to be very dry by the time it gets out of the oven. So remember not to over fry here. You're just looking for a little color, a little golden brown, but we're not trying to fry that meat all the way through. And it will fry quickly because it's very thin, as I said, about a quarter of an inch. Our cutlet is frying up nicely. Time to flip it over. And as you can see, we have a beautiful golden brown. A few dark spots where the cutlet touched the bottom of the pan, but there's nothing to worry about. It'll be fine. Just want to make sure your oil is at least at 350 degrees. Uh, again, if it's too low, you will have greasy food. and Nobody likes greasy food. Our cutlet's done frying, and I'm just going to uh, let some of the uh, oil drain off. And then I'm going to put it on some paper towels to absorb what oil may be on it. And we're ready to move on to the next step. As you can see, our cutlet is draining nicely. And you can see the towel has absorbed some oil. So we'll remove the uh, towels. And it's time to put some sauce on. Now, we've taken all this time to get a nice, crispy cutlet done correctly, fried it up beautifully. We don't want to inundate it with a ton of sauce. I just don't like it when it's all covered in sauce and it's soggy. I mean, especially after we took all this trouble to get a nice, crisp cutlet. So I'm a little stingy with the sauce. I do put um, a, a, a fairly good amount on the top but I don't like it to go over the sides and especially underneath. I will be cooking this on this plate. So how it looks here is how it'll look when it comes out of the oven. Now you're more than welcome to put sauce under it if you like. It's just my personal preference not to do that. So as you can see, it's a nice even layer. Uh, I did my best not to let it run off the sides. And now we're going to add some fresh mozzarella cheese. And again, I try and be um, pretty careful of not getting it all over the plate because we are going to be cooking in this plate. There's a little little piece that fell off to the side there. We'll see how it looks when it comes out of the oven. So a fairly generous amount, not overdone. And this is a Parmesan dish, so we're going to sprinkle some nice Parmigiano Reggiano on top. A lot of restaurants don't do that. They just go with the mozzarella. I don't think that's fair. So now that we've got a nice coating of Parmigiano, Reggiano, and mozzarella, it's time to pop it into a 450 degree oven. And we're going to let it cook until the cheese starts to melt and gets nice and gooey and we get a little browning on top. Now you might have to turn the broiler on for the last few minutes. 
So be prepared. Well, it's time to add our little garnish. We're that close to being done. The only thing left to do is give it the taste test. And believe me, I am not having a problem volunteering for that chore. Wow, this thing smells so good, I can't wait. Nice and tender through the pork. Look at that cheese, nice and gooey. Uh, it's perfectly done, nice and moist. Here it goes. Wow, that is so good. Crunchy, tasty, cheesy. I need another bite. It's that good. Not smothered in sauce, but you can always add a little more if you like. Look at that, just done perfectly inside. Wow, believe me when I tell you guys, this thing is good. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. So until next time, my friends, eat well and have a great day. Bye-bye.